All righty. All righty. All righty. We got some big changes. We got some big changes. So let's talk about them real quick. Uh, there's honestly not that much to go over. Uh, so we'll talk about what we can go over. Right. Let me bring up a second wow head. Just so we can have this available uh, spot. Okay. So they're nerfing uh, Leech and Avoidance. Uh, I think, honestly, I think Avoidance just needs to go away. Uh, I really don't think you should buy RNG, get a literal defensive... Uh, RNG, get a defensive value on your gear. I think Leech, Speed, Indestructible, whatever, is fine, but I'd be totally fine with Avoidance just going away uh, outside of Talents altogether. Uh, I don't really see there being a benefit especially in High Mythic Plus, to how prevalent required avoidance is, uh, and I really think you should just remove the defensive value from avoidance and potentially the defensive value from versatility as well, because uh, I don't think we need more defensives. We need less. But they're giving a nerf by 50%, um, and they're also nerfing a lot of talents that are that give a lot of leech. So like Demon Hunter only gets 6% instead of base 10 uh, from their stuff, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Warriors got nerfed. Um, Season Soldier got nerfed. Leeching Strikes got nerfed. Um, just for all classes, right? So this is going to make us take 5% more AoE damage as arms. And we're also going to have 2% less leech uh, as all specs as Warrior. Which is a decent size nerf, but I think, honestly, it's fine. Uh, I think it's fine, depending on how they're... It just depends on how stuff is tuned, right? Because if stuff is tuned well, like, these numbers don't matter at all. Like, they legitimately don't matter. Um, but if they're not tuned well, then nerfing this becomes a problem. So we just have to trust that things will be tuned correctly, right? Let's get down to the actual changes. Uh, Blood and Thunder talent removed. Blood and Thunder was a, was a talent right here, uh, specifically for arms, that just essentially made your you just applied rend on thunderclap and now thunderclap applies rend as default uh, i think maybe with this change it's okay and thunderclap doesn't need to be like a base talent but i feel like it probably still should um crackling thunder no longer increases thunderclap's damage why this is important is because thunderclap um cracking thunder increased damage it was a required throughput ability not only for arms in most of any aoe situation but especially for mountain fame Mountain Thane has had a lot of difficulty with their talent point situation over here because of required points like Crackling Thunder, because it just means that your main ability is doing 30, just doing 10% more damage, right? So removing that, removing the required nature of that, you don't need to take the move. You don't care about the increased uh, radius or the movement speed reduction. It becomes more of a flex point, right? That you can put there as something nice because if you position well, you don't need this at all. So that's good. Um, Champion's Might now causes you to deal 25% increased critical damage to targets chained to your spear instead of just being in the area of your spear. This critical damage is now additive instead of multiplicative, matching other similar effects. And um, based on the math, it's about a 10% nerf to spear uh, because it's additive instead of multiplicative, which means that basically here's, here's this. This is what Garms put. If the, it's added a multi before, now, which means that we get 2.25 instead of 2.5 on the modifier, right? And if the math is wrong, then I get to blame Garms and not myself. So, haha, Garms, you're a nerd. I like you, Garms. Garms is a fun guy. Um, but so this is a nerf to spear, which is, I'll be honest, I don't care. I, I think Spear is a shit ability. I don't like Spear at all. Uh, I don't want to care about Spear. And if Spear is just worse in every situation instead of taking Thunderous Roar, it's fine by me because I think Spear is trash. Uh, piercing Challenge increases all damage dealt by Spear. It was only initial damage. Uh, who cares? Um, this is a big change, though. Upward now reduces the cooldown of Thunderous Roar by 45 seconds plus 30. So what this does is it turns Thunderous Roar into a 45-second cooldown which means now you can Avatar Roar, Roar, Avatar Roar again. Previously with the change beforehand, you are desyncing your Avatar and your uh, Dragon's Roar by an entire Avatar cast. Because it was uh, a minute instead of 45 seconds, you would do Avatar Roar, Roar, Avatar, 
and then it would be Avatar Roar again, right? Because it because of how it would desync the um, actually wait, it would be like Avatar Roar, Roar, Avatar Roar, Avatar. No, the 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 third ones where they resync. The third ones where they resync at three minutes. So I was right the first time. Um, but this is pretty big uh, for letting Avatar and Roar actually coincide their cooldown together, um, which is pretty important for a lot of your AOE damage. Um, and it fixed the issue of uh, all of your abilities desyncing, and it desync just sucks. So <laughs> I think it's a very 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 good change. Another thing to note about this specifically is why I brought up the Fury Tree. Is Odin's Fury was buffed significantly. Uh, and now with Odin's Fury being buffed, uh, you're going to have a situation in AoE where if you're playing Fury for AoE, you're going to be able to cast Odin's Fury, which will also, because of Titan's Torment, give you an avatar. So you're going to Odin's Fury with avatar. And then every 45 seconds, you'll also get bonus damage to your roar. Now, how Roar works is it does half of its damage up front and then another half of its damage over time. Uh, so you're getting so having Avatar or having Odin's Fury proc Avatar with Titan's Torment and then allowing you to roar every single time you Odin's Fury is actually a lot of damage. Uh, that's a lot of extra damage, especially in big AOE pulls. So that is it's uproar is a very, very big change. Um, and it also just helps everything just kind of mush together and flow together well instead of desyncing all your shit which uh, sucks when that happens fix an issue causing rallying cry to increase maximum health by 15 instead of the intended 10 um honestly i feel like they could just buff rally to 15 percent and call it a day uh or they need to buff rally they also they also need to have rally get the darkness treatment where it gets double value in mythic plus so you have a 20 percent health increase in mythic plus and a 10 percent increase in raid um because as it stands now, especially in a Mythic Plus setting, Rally gives the same amount of health as Obsidian Scales does uh, with Black Attunement from Augmentation Evoker on half the cooldown in Mythic Plus. So if it's half the cooldown in Mythic Plus, it should be double the value when you press that button. Um, so Rally needs the Darkness treatment. Honestly, I could. I honestly would want Rally... I, won't, I just want Rally to be better. I mean, it's decent, but it's not nearly as good as it used to be with the Inspiring Presence node. Um, it's okay, but, uh, I really think they need to buff it for Mythic Plus just because it, it's honestly pitiful in Mythic Plus. Uh, for Colossus, Revenge now grants a stack of Colossal Might. It's the same thing they did with us in Arms of Cleave. It's just like, hey, you're going to get Colossal Might stacks by playing the way your class is supposed to be played. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. So that's totally fine. Um, they removed the armor. And instead just gave a physical damage reduction to keep your feet on the ground in the Mountain Thane tree uh, over here. Currently, it used to increase armor by 8%. And why that mattered is because increasing your armor by 8% meant it was actually a throughput node. So because that meant keep your feet on the ground with a throughput node, you just took it every single time, even though you actually wanted Steadfast as the Peaks. Steadfast as the Peaks is really interesting and also really fucking good. Um... So what it does is when you impending victory, it increases your max health by 10%, right? And then it heals you for the excess of how much health. So like, let's say you're at full health, right? 100% health. You impending victory, you go to 110% health. After that five seconds of impending victory is gone, you go back to 100% health, and then you would have healed that little 10% health value. So what you can actually do is you can... Re impending instead of impending victory to be a reactionary button, you it lets you pre impending victory something. So now you actually have another 10% health as a buffer against a really big damaging ability. And then after you're hit by it, you heal that 10% chunk that you had before that thing hit. So it actually it's actually a really, really strong defensive on top of it giving us a stamina node. So that's actually it's really strong uh, for Mountain Thane. And it is something that wasn't. It's probably been overlooked, definitely. Um, I think when we I did the uh, the warrior the warrior talk video with Arkham Tiros and Method Dan, he mentioned it was slim 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 similarium. No, let me turn. Let me do, let me get his name correct. I have to turn this off. Silmar 
Silmarillion. Silmarillion. I don't know how to say it correctly. I, I just called him Slim most of the time. Um, but he he actually brought this up that uh, Slim brought that up in uh, that warrior talk. And it was actually pretty, it made a lot of sense, right? Um, so that's really cool. That's really good. We no longer need the required throughput from keep your feet on the ground. It can just be, hey, you take reduced damage and that's more of a tank thing. And now we get the stam plus the added uh, utility of the impending victory uh, pre-use. So I think that's really, really cool. It's really good. Um, and honestly, they just need to get rid of armor to the teeth. Tying more things to how much strength we get from armor just sucks. Uh, opportunist now increase the damage and critical strike damage of your next overpower by 15%. So we will just look over real quick at Slayer and Opportunist was here when raging. Uh, so it was opportunist for arms specifically. They didn't buff the um, when overpower is a cooldown reset by tactician. Next overpower deals 10% additional damage and 10% additional crit damage. So that means its value. So I mean, it just got this talent got buffed by 50%. Um, instead of Fierce Follow Through, which Fierce Follow Through is still very, very good. So I'm curious which one's going to be better. It may be Opportunist is going to be your AoE um, button, and then Fierce Follow Through is going to be your single target, since you're going to do a lot more MS damage in single target, and then Opportunist can be... Because that damage buff also does buff your... Um, it also buffs your uh, over your Dreadnought damage, and what we're about to get to buffs your overpowered damage even more. Arms, all ability damage increased by 30%. Overpowered damage increased by another 20%. They reverted the anger management change because it was stupid as fuck. Fury, all the ability damage increased by 30%. They went, you know what? Oh god, this class is fucking terrible. We're gonna spit on that thing. 30% or buff. <laughs> For buff specs. So, hey man, it's something. Uh, there's a funny... Uh, Garms posted... Garm's the same guy who did the math, posted a really funny uh, THD uh, response. Where is it? We got it right here. Blah, 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 blah. You're still bottom DPS with that buff. That's how. Like, can you see all of it? Yeah, you're still bottom DPS with that buff. And this is Garm's. That's how bad. Oh, fuck. So, I mean, it's we're probably still going to need some help. Damage wise, I mean, shit, if they're aura buffing us by 30%, obviously something's wrong. So, this is probably they're like, okay, let's just throw 30% on that shit and then kind of see where they're at and then we can tune stuff up or down. Because we were terrible during raid testing, man. It was looking like almost a prop warrior tier because holy shit, it was not looking good, brother. Not looking good. But, um, but. With these changes, it's a step in the right direction. There's not a lot going on here, right? Like, it's just, hey, there's the aura buffs. I mean, the keep your feet on the ground thing is really nice for Thane. Um, the champion spear nerf, uh, I, I don't like spear anyway. Uh, fixing crackling thunder, uh, changing crackling thunder so it's not a throughput button. Um, making thunderclap apply run by default is good, and the upward change is crazy strong, especially when we're considering, once again, the... Uh, the potential of AOE with Arm or with Fury, with Odin's Fury being buffed, and you're going to be Avatar buffing both of those with uh, your Thunderous Roar upward change. So, ooh, there's some potential here, man. There's some potential here. Um, it's looking decent. Um, because one of the things that's uh, been a problem with Warrior is that outside of the bug that makes Slayer anger management not work with Slayer, outside of that bug. Um, which has been immensely annoying that it's lasted forever for some fucking reason. Um, it's been, like, since beta launched that that thing has not been fixed yet, so we haven't been able to properly test the class. Um, but outside of that, a lot of Warrior plays fine. Like, it works, it plays fine, it's good, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Mortal Strike for single target. Uh, Cleave for AoE, 3 plus target, Mortal Strike for Sweeping Strikes, they, they're doing a good job, right? They're, it feels like they're, like I said this before, they're bringing Warrior kind of back to basics with stuff. And we do get an extra button in Demolish, and then Mountain Thane has Thunder Blast, but it's essentially replacing buttons we already had on our bars. Um, the only new button we're actually getting is Demolish with uh, 
arms and prot. So it feels like they're kind of reeling back some of the shit, and we're going back to basics. Um, and how Warrior plays is totally fine right now. We play fine, right? Our damage is just bad. So slapping these 30% aura buffs on there. Uh, I mentioned that this opportunist change, as well as Overpower getting an additional 20%. So Overpower got a 50% uh, damage amp. Also goes into and affects stuff like Dreadnought, uh, which can be a lot of AoE damage. So we're looking decent. Obviously, we're not doing as much damage as we'd want to yet. Um, but with them making changes week after week and improving our class and giving us buffs and adjusting things, we're feeling pretty good. Um, honestly, having them throw a aura buff as big as 30% on our class, as much as it might not change things, it means a lot, right? It means a lot because they're, it, you can see this patch note and realize they looked at Warrior and went, oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't 30% aura buff something unless they're like, oh, boy. So it gives me more hope towards what's happening um, with the class as a whole compared to how it was before uh because honestly just having your just being bottom of the dps like your class feels fine but being bottom of the dps and we're still getting nice quality of life things it's looking good right it's looking it's looking fine i think we're going to be fine it's looking pretty good still some things that we need to be worked on but way more hopium currently less copium more hopium uh, right now we're feeling decent they're making changes that make sense um like removing the throughput of the armor buff from keep your feet on the ground and instead of giving what they feel is the correct amount of physical damage reduction from it for tanks feels good man I, I think we're doing i think they're doing the right thing um and i look forward to increasing changes because they're making some crazy changes and i have another video coming with uh, the mythic plus changes as well so yeah we're doing i feel feeling good Feeling good so far. Uh, I have faith in their ability to balance things. The classes play well. Um, but before I keep rambling over and over about the same shit, I'm going to say bye-bye and leave. Bye-bye.